As I'm sure we all heard this year, wildfires are a huge problem in the US and other parts of the world, leading to devastating economic and environmental impacts and a buildup of toxic ash. This toxic ash could be carried downstream in the waterways, posing a health hazard and an environmental hazard. But last year in California, an organization placed bales of hay containing oyster mushroom inoculum. This prevented the toxins such as asbestos, arsenic, and lead from going downstream and harming the environment. This is an example of mycoremediation. Mycoremediation is when fungi are used to break down pollutants in the environment. Myco is derived from the Greek mykes, meaning fungus, and remediation is derived from the suffix remedium, which is Latin for restoring balance. As fungi get larger, they expand in their environment. Mushrooms, such as the one pictured, do this through a network called mycelium. As this network grows through the soil, it secretes enzymes that convert contaminants into other forms, including those that are less soluble than before. These contaminants are localized to and accumulated by the mycelium, which prevents them from doing further damage to the environment and makes them easier to remove. A variety of mushrooms can be utilized for microremediation depending on what types of enzymes they have. In the case of the California wildfires, oyster mushrooms were used. They belong to the genus Plutoris, which has been shown to break down many compounds, including heavy metals, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, and TNT. Another example is Pestalociopsis microspora, which breaks down polyester polyurethane, used frequently in industry and construction. Mycoremediation has also been used in environments polluted by radioactive waste. Saprotrophic microfungi found in soil were able to decompose radioactive debris from the Chernobyl reactor and have been shown to destroy radioactive hot particles within 50 to 150 days. Alternary alternate pictured on the right, as well as certain varieties of Aspergillus, Penicillium, or Rhizopus have also been shown to ionize radioactive particles like cesium. Macrofungi, especially basidiomycetes like Mycena polygramma on the left, also accumulate large amounts of radionuclides. For this reason, mycologist Paul Stamets has argued for the use of microremediation in the disaster area around Fukushima. His eight-step plan would involve mulching the landscape with chipped wood debris from the destroyed buildings and trees before planting native trees and their mycorrhizal mushrooms, like the Lacaria amethystina on the left. The fruiting bodies would then be continuously harvested under hazmat protocols before being incinerated. Interestingly, melanin may be the key to fungi's peculiar ability to process radiation. Melanin in cell walls may act as the receptor in certain fungi's hormetic response to radiation. Some advantages of microremediation are that it's inexpensive, energy efficient, and good for the soil. Also, the mycelium is e able to easily grow through a variety of substrates. Some disadvantages are that it takes a lot of time, you have to match the fungus to the pollutant environment, and it's not very well studied at the moment. To learn more about microremediation, you can visit one of these links or articles.